heroes. But who is the Sphinx? Khafre or another king? A lion's head which would have been reworked to be transformed into Pharaoh's head? Whatever. The question is, what does the head of the Sphinx look like? With 3D face reconstruction software, here is the face of the Sphinx reconstructed correctly for the first time. No comment. Since they were black, it makes sense to make a sculpture in their image. Like a painter who paints his god in his image, the Egyptians made the Sphinx to theirs. It is hard to imagine white Egyptians making a sculpture of their god or their king with a Negro profile. Yes, you heard the word Negro. It is unfair to show you a recipe without showing you the real chef of this monument. Look at all this sculpture. You'll notice one thing. They all have broken noses. If one observes the statue and frescoes, the resemblance is striking. The nose, the big lips. Indeed, many said you have a broken nose because they had, as they say, a Negro nose. Herodotus said that Colchon was a colony of the Egyptians because they had black skin and curly hair. Book 2, Euterp. The Colchon were an African colony which migrated to settle near the Black Sea. Aristotle also spoke of the Egyptians, describing them as excessively black. Those who are excessively black are coward. They are the Egyptians and the Ethiopians. The Greek used four words to say black, dark brown. Keleinos, Eremnos, Aiton and Melas. Melas is the most complete physical black. It is the root of the word that forms the word melanin. Melas, melanin. Melanin is the pigment that colors the skin black to protect it from the sun. Aristotle will say precisely agan melanes to designate the Egyptian and the Ethiopians, which mean excessively black in Greek. Zesostris III, called Senusert in Egyptian, hold the record for the number of sculptures in his effigy, dozen. Almost all of these sculptures have broken noses, but some escaped the Russian Inquisition. The Senegalese professor Diop asked the Care Museum to take three samples measuring only one square millimeters from mummy of Ramses II, Seti I and Tutmosis III exhibited at the Museum of Cairo. Once the sample would have been analyzed, they will have revealed the level of melanin. The higher the rate of melanin, the darker the skin. That I put at the disposal of the participants of the conference so that we can observe them under a microscope. And we can absolutely see the degree of melanin under the skin of ancient Egyptians. There is enough left despite the partial destruction of the epidermis. In the region between the dermis and the epidermis, there are enough inclusions of the melanocyte bases, areas where the melanin would have resided, to reveal a level of melanin via these inclusions, absolutely absent in leucoderma races. And last year, I wanted to apply this study to the royal mummy of Ramses II, Seti I, and Thutmose III. For one year, I have been writing to the curator of the Cairo Museum, because I don't need more than a square millimeter one square millimeter of skin, but not always in the same region. And, I regret, I did not obtain these samples. So you see, it is a very easy, accessible study that can be done. Here are the blades. These are the preparations. Just put them under the lens of the microscope to see the melanin level. So based on my own investigations, here they are. Until further investigation. The museum has still not responded for 35 years. The Egyptians were called Kemets and Egypt was called Kemet, the land of the black. No, it is not the black color of the Nile silt, which is mentioned as some archaeologists claim, but the color of the skin of the people living there. When we speak of white country, we are not referring to the color of the snow in the Alps. 
Let's end the rumors of whether or not Howard Carter falsified the golden mask of Tutankhamun and reproduced false relic. Observe the mask of Tutankhamun and the face of this African girl. I can see Carter, the European, falsifying the African steel mask. It is noon. The temperature is at full force. That is to say that is about 45 to 46 degrees Celsius. There is absolutely no shade, since it's a quarry and there is no building and we can absolutely not take shelter. So much as to say that I will not stay here three and a half hours. It is getting a little warm here. We are behind the pyramid of Menko. I'm beginning to understand why Femi did not come. In Egypt, during the summer months, the season during which the pyramid was built, temperature reached 45 degrees Celsius and higher. Under this overwhelming sun, no other human race could survive shirtless more than four days without experiencing a severe skin burn. The only race capable of withstanding days and months without problem and without sunscreen is the Negro race with black skin. I paint and I never had a preference for this or that color. A painter like all the colors, but we say that we must give back to Caesar what belonged to Caesar. Well, let's give back to the Egyptian what belongs to the Egyptian. The Egyptian of the pyramid for millennia were Negroes, neither olive skinned nor mulatto, but charcoal black. The Egyptians memorialized and imprinted their negritude in granite and quartz for eternity. What must we do? Destroy them to erase this era of humanity? Hide them? Speak out? Say nothing? Ask yourself these questions. For better or for worse, this story does not end there. It can cross anyone's mind to draw this shape. Nothing exceptional. On the planet, the probability that there are two civilizations which know how to make concrete in its chemical complexity, to smelt copper, and to attach them symbolically with the same shape is unimaginable. Yet thousands of kilometers separate them and the ocean. An investigative detective will tell you it was the same person, the same hand that made them. The mystery is solved until proven otherwise. Technically, these staples do not connect anything and do not strengthen the stones at all. The Egyptians knew it. It is a religious element. Egyptians spread it everywhere on Earth. In at least 2590 BC, Heda, a court scientist, saluting these companions who were going towards Lebanon to look for oak wood, noted that the boats disappeared after a few minutes, diving below the horizon. However, the distance is not great. The human eye looks much further. He realized the extraordinary. The Earth is round. Expeditions were prepared. The Egyptians then left to explore the Earth. They knew that they cannot get lost. Since the Earth is round, they can always return to the starting point. The Egyptians knew navigation systems and infallibly mastered orientation. They had tools for universal measurements of distance and time, the stopwatch. The boats were fast and efficient. They were equipped to go discover the world. At the time of Herodotus, circumnavigating Africa by boat had become a promenade. When he stopped digging the canal which joined the waters of the Nile to the Arabian Gulf, Nico sent the Phoenicians on ships with orders to return through the columns of Hercules into the Septentrional Sea and back from this way in Egypt. Having thus traveled for two years, the third year they passed the columns of Hercules and returned to Egypt. Thou thousands of Egyptians traveled to America, now Guatemala, for the first time between 2000 and 3000 years BC. But not only the Egyptians, many other Africans accompanied them. Imagine, you are Mayans and you want to build a building to commemorate the dead or the gods. You observe and copy nature. You make graves in a circle, square and all kinds of shapes. 
the last shape that comes to mind is that of a pyramid, and even less with tunnels passing underneath, as in Egypt. Recent analyses of Egyptian mummies have revealed traces of cocaine. The coca grows only in America. In addition, you must imagine them observing and measuring the equinoxes and solstices to align the pyramids. The Egyptian calendar started on July 14th, plus five days of celebration. That of Mayans also started on July 14th, plus five days of celebration. Then find the chemical formula for making concrete. By comparing the buildings of America and those of Egypt, the resemblance is striking, like two drops of water. Stronger evidence? What if we measured the pyramids of Central America? Before watching this film, the discovery of the standard of universal measurement, the meter, was a secret. It was complicated and abstract to find this universal standard. Now you know how the meter was invented by the Egyptians. And now the ultimate. The Egyptians who arrived here on the other side of the world built a pyramid with the meter and pi. The base of the Pyramid of the Sun measures 220 meters. Converted into units of inches, feet, or from yard, it becomes difficult for workers. In meters, the numbers are whole. The diagonal of the pyramid is pi in meters. The base of the pyramid, 220 meters, divided by the height. That is to say, 70 meters. The result is pi, 3.1428. Compared with Khufu, pi, 3.1429. The error is 0.0001%. The layout of the other pyramids is also in integers in meters. The geometry of the Tikal pyramid is exactly that of Khufu. In 1983, archaeologist Garth Norman discovered that the Egyptian royal cubit was used by the builders in the edifices of Central America. The big year, the year of the 26,000 years of axial precession of the equinoxes, is present on a map of Orion, inscribed on the Izapa Stella. The idea that a pre-Mayan people, or that the Mayans found and developed alone, isolated from the rest of the world, meter, pi, royal cubit, geopolymer concrete, and solar energy to melt the stone, is totally excluded. The probability is zero. On the other hand, we see here indisputably the same fingerprint, the same civilization, Egypt. 12,000 kilometers separate Egypt from Mexico. How did they manage to cross 7,800 kilometers of ocean? Between 2,000 and 3,000 years BC, the Egyptians crossed the Mediterranean, passed through Malta, refueled in Spain, and crossed the Atlantic Ocean in a straight line to get to Yucatan. They arrived by the thousands, and there is no shortage of Negroid faces. In 1946, giant heads called Olmecs were discovered. We see clearly African Negro heads. The African Olmecs were discovered in Central America, at the very place where the pyramids were found. It is the Egyptians' landing place. The Egyptians may have crossed the ocean via a land bridge, a continent in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. When Plato indicates Atlantis, after the columns of Hercules, in other words, after the Strait of Gibraltar, it is very likely that he is right. This large expanse that would surface would be the ridge of the Atlantic. Atlantis would be the Azores. Following an unprecedented earthquake, this part of the ridge would have collapsed. It is this cataclysm, which Plato calls the sinking of Atlantis, which cut the Egyptian Africans in two. Given the trips they made, they may have built buildings here before the upheaval. Research of this bridge should be done at this point of the ridge. This theory may seem far-fetched, but the chemistry, the pi, the meter, the golden number, the royal cubit, and the solar lenses did not cross the ocean on their own. They may have crossed the Atlantic with boats directly. Christopher Columbus made the second trip from the Canary Islands to Guadeloupe in 21 days. Documents speak of it. In less than 20 days, we saw land. It was an island without harbor or ports. Unable to land there, Columbus came to disembark on
These mysterious people called Olmec are Afro-Egyptians. The Olmec heads are also made of concrete. What impressed me was the Ethiopian type it represents. I reflected upon it, and indubitably there had been blacks in this country, and it had been during the earliest ages of the world. Once settled, they developed a writing similar in shape and meaning to Egyptian hieroglyphics. Far from Africa, the Egyptians invented a new variation of writing resembling their hieroglyphics. They continued to develop their beliefs and knowledge, thanks to the memories of their distant ancestors. On Stella V of Izapa, the Tree of Life, we see the three pyramids of Giza with the temples in front, the waves symbolizing the trip to America, and the roots of the tree, their descendants. And finally, the great apocalyptic wave. Here are details of the Stella's E and D of Quirigua. The two figures have the same posture holding the scepter, and all three have the same type of beard as that of Tutankhamun. The Native Americans had no beards, not to mention broken noses. On the architecture side in America, as in Egypt, the workers applied the same construction method of pyramids and temples. All life was organized around them. The limestone was burned to make lime and mortar. With this mortar, they built all the pyramids of Central America. Hundreds of pyramids and temples were built in Guatemala, in the Yucatan and Southern Mexico. All were built by Afro-Egyptians, made of concrete volcanic ash mixed with lime. They were all aligned with Sirius, the stars of the constellation Orion. Later, they moved to Teotihuacan and Tula. Here, it wasn't whole concrete blocks like in Egypt, but natural volcanic stone mixed with concrete. The construction method is the same for Khufu Pyramid via corridors. Of course, the city of Tula and Teotihuacan were built with the Egyptian meter as a unit of measure. The Egyptians aligned the city of Teotihuacan with, now you know it. The city was aligned at 14 degrees 7, not with the north, but with the southwest, with Betelgeuse, Alnilam, and Rigel, passing through the hemisphere's axis on November 20th at midnight, around at least 2200 BC. This alignment is observed during these years, give or take 50 years. This tells us the date of construction of the city of Teotihuacan. Here they turned around. These buildings were not built by the Mayans. Centuries later, the Mayans and Incas arranged their lives around these cities following the departure of the Africans. The legend explaining that it was the gods who came down to build these temples endured. It seems that coexistence was impossible between these two technologically very different civilizations. Following wars with indigenous people less developed than they, Afro-Egyptians, or as we can now call them, the Amero-Egypto-Africans, migrated little by little towards the South Pacific coast and abandoned these places that the locals subsequently appropriated. They settled in remote, high elevations, maybe to have peace. Wherever they went with their powerful solar lenses, these men were taken for gods. They left their imprint and their legends everywhere. There may have been a great cataclysm, a giant 300-meter tsunami that swept away all over the Yucatan Peninsula. The survivors, Egyptians and the local population, abandoned the place quickly and went south. 4,500 kilometers separate Karol from Kalakmul. Again, there are pyramids aligned with Sirius and the site is built with the meter. The journey continues towards Machu Picchu. The Machu Picchu buildings fascinate everyone. The whole site was built in poured andesite and granite, melted into lava thanks to the solar lens. We had to measure to see if we could find the Egyptian royal cubit. Not one stone from the magnificent walls of the sites of Olanta Tambo, Pisa, Cuzco, or Sacsayhuaman were cut. These sites were built by Afro-Egyptians with the solar lens. After their departure, the Incas continued to maintain them, but with a rudimentary technique. The technological gap is obvious. 
the Temple of the Sun, Corin Cancha, a masterpiece, is also made of molten volcanic andesite stone. There, too, a surprise awaits. In Peru, in the city of Cusco, there is a temple called Coricancha. This is a major temple, and I measured its dimensions. It's 10 meters wide on the outside. Each wall is one meter thick, making an enclosure with an interior eight meters wide. So here, on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean in Peru, we have a temple with metric units. Here is how the Egyptians reasoned. Pi is divided by the first 10 whole numbers. They use the whole number 7. Pi divided by 7 equals 44.8 to make these niches. This is the basis of the niche. On this basis, they establish the golden rectangle. The base is divided by 7. They subtracted this result from the measurement of the top of the niche. Here is the shape of the niche, which is created, all in centimeters. The margin of error is plus or minus 2 millimeters. Quentin Laplatte measures. Frankly, given the geometry applied, do you still think that these builders are the Incas? By chance, on the way, they came across a cave with sacred dimensions. They built a single door, the past. On the stones, one can see the imprint of an external object that was placed on the stone when it was poured. The concentrated ray sometimes burned stones due to an error in handling the lens. the Afro-Egyptians descended more and more towards the south. Their migration continued towards the Titicaca region. The same technique was used in Tiwanaku, the Sun Gates and the Temple of Kalasasea. Andesite melted into lava, then poured into molds.